Here we go, one swimming off with it. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Good fish to start the day off with. What's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here. We're back out behind my house. I'm getting ready to head to the Bassmaster Classic. So I needed to film something for you guys. So I'm gonna give you some spring bass fishing tips today. I've got these fish dialed in out back. So I'm gonna break down some tips along the way, show you some of my favorite baits, some favorite techniques and how to locate some of these fish yourself. Let's get started. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Another good chunk. So. I want to show you guys something. This is a female from last year. She's not very big, maybe upper twos, but you can see this tail scarred up and recovered. When the female fans the bed, their tails get bloody down here. So she's already a spawner. She's up there looking to spawn. Um, you know, she's not that fat yet. This fish uh, is still early. I don't think this fish is going to spawn probably for another month or so. She's up there feeding now. She's more of in a pre-spawn phase, though we have spawning fish out here right now. She's more of in a pre-spawn phase. Come on, recover. Whee! There we go. You know, so the good thing about those fish is, as I look at her, she wasn't all porker. She wasn't bloodied. She's not up there fanning the bed to put her eggs down. The male, you know, uses his mouth to get up there and the female fans it off and, and their tails get bloody. They have signs of bedding and she wasn't porker so she just started eating it up so we have fish in the pre-spawn phase the spawn phase and still that winter transition into spring phase so i think a lot of guys get confused and when someone says well bass are spawning they think all the bass are spawning and the spawn happens over a matter of 58 degrees you know all the way through the 60s spawns are going to happen you know, um, spring bass fishing is synonymous with March, April, May. Uh, but we're in February right now here in Northern California and it's been unseasonably warm uh, for the last few weeks. So it's raised our water temperatures. We, it put fish into a pre-spawn phase. Um, we, I've even caught a couple of fish off of beds, but I would say m the majority of the fish right now, because we're almost to March, are more in that spring transition they're transitioning into spring and some starting to get into the pre-spawn and a very small percentage in the spawn so if you're going to be out fishing a tournament or out fishing don't think you're only going out bed fishing have the idea that you know if it's later in the spring maybe you're going to fish some post-spawn fish try some top water flip some mats throw some frogs or you might look for beds and if it's early might look for some of those pre-spawn fish in those deeper spots next to those flats and fish them that way not all bass are doing the same thing at the same time, so I'll race that out of your mind if you've heard that. Oh, and she's off. Not bad, about a three, three and a half pound fish. Not bad. You know, that fish uh, just cruised up, was starting to stage out pulled right back out into the shade line of a pipe. I could see where the fish was looking to bed, but pulled back out for a meal. Wasn't quite ready to start his business yet. And that was a male. Just pulled back out into that shade line. I seen the tail moving, pitch right up there, boom, immediately. So we had to uh, slow down and finesse fish these fish. They just weren't hitting reaction baits. So what we did is we're here on my lake. It's a community lake, pulling hard. And uh, in the back of these bays is where they're going to spawn, where it's real calm, has good wind protection. And we're seeing lots of little males up and roaming the bank. So these females are still staging out deep. So we pull to the back of these bays, get about 50 feet off the bank. And then this uh, fan cast big Texas rig worms around. You just slowly drag them, get them right in there where those females are hanging out. And they want to feed too. Not bad. So this is a heavy grassy area that I'm fishing right here. It's a real shallow flat on the lake. And I was initially looking for spawning fish, but as soon as I found out, I started getting a bunch of grass hung up on my baits and I started getting bites there. I know that these fish 
are more than likely pre-spawn or winter to spring transition fish and you know i was just fishing this ocho texas rig and it's beat up on each end so i pulled it off of that worm hook and now i'm wacky rigging it but i want to show you guys something and the reason why i know the majority of these fish i'm catching are winter to spring transitional fish is i cast out there and i leave i let it fall on slack line i want it to fall all the way to the bottom i'm dead sticking it I'm leaving it in there for about 10, 15 seconds at a time. They're not smashing it right away. If you feel that hard bing right away, it's usually a small fish. I leave that bow in my line and I don't have a tight line. You see that nice bow right there? And I'm watching that bow. If that bow starts to lift up or I see my line angle change, I'll reel down and set the hook on the fish at that point. But what's going on is all of the better fish we've caught already, you know, when I seen that bow started to go out, they were swimming back out to deep water. They came up to get a meal and swam back out. That is a clear sign that these fish are just starting to feed. That's a winter to spring transitional fish. Came up from his winter spot, got a meal, and eased it back out. And they're also biting still like it's winter time. They're in that real lethargic, just grab and go. This is why we're dead sticking and I'm not throwing a reaction bait right now. If I had full on pre-spawn going in my lake, I would be able to throw a square bill or chatter bait or a top water and get them to come get it because they're consist consistently hanging out shallow, uh, which is not the case. These fish are coming up, getting a meal and leaving. Hang with us guys, we'll be right back. Hey guys, did you know that Juris Truly is now hosting Lucky Tackle Box's monthly panfish instructionals? And aside from relentless fish catching, I'll be breaking down the rigging and the gear you need to get going along the way. And of course, a few extra tips to help you score more fish on the goodies included in your box. So remember, the tug is our drug. So go visit LuckyTackleBox.com and get signed up today. Are you into diving, surfing, or fishing? And have you checked out the Salt Life YouTube channel yet? From awesome surfing insight to scuba diving locations and in and offshore fishing, bundled up with all sorts of crazy cool footage, the Salt Life has you ocean lovers covered. So go check out their YouTube channel and tell them if sent you. Ever try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Did you know that P-Line makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs from the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium? Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with P-Line's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. P-Line, baby! Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. Oh, you heard they got weapons of big fish destruction? Well, you heard right. Biwa Fishing Performance is the newest company hit the U.S. market by storm. With some of the sickest swim baits around and non-cookie cutter style lures that you could ever get your hands on, it's time to show these fish something new. Visit biwa.com. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon with one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from North River, Hughescraft, and now Crestliner? Chances are they have the right boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your repair or boating maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. We'll see you there. I had a big one at the dock last night, almost get it. I'm up hot right behind it. So. Well, mama told me when I was young. Here we go, guys. Another one. That line just started swimming right back to me as we were talking. <laughs> Another nice one. That one's pushing, getting a little bit closer in the upper twos there. Another decent fish. Little bit of red on her gums, just starting to maybe get some crawfish, but they're in this grass, so I have a feeling she's eating bluegills and targeting bluegills. That's also why I went with that green pumpkin finish instead of a black and red. A lot of the time, you know, out in the delta or an area where I see a lot of crawfish roaming around, I'm going to use that black and red a lot more often because that'll get you a bigger bite. It shows calcium it shows protein 
um, and they love to eat those crawdads in the pre-spawn but they're in grass right now i'm not seeing any crawdads i tried the black and red but that green pumpkin looks much more bluegill this time here grab your rod grab your rod <laughs> oh broke off <laughs> oh no came out of his mouth Another pretty good fish there. Yeah. Not bad at all. Show you what I'm using here. A little two and a quarter pounder. I have a 4-0 Trocar worm hook. It's an EWG worm hook. And I'm going to slide my Ocho back down here. I like using the Strike King Ocho. I think they're a little bit heavier than a Senko and gets down and I can fish it uh, weightless, you know. Right where I'm fishing right here is only about five and a half, six foot deep, give or take. And if I can get my worm down to the bottom weightless and drag it just like so, I mean, it's so much more subtle dragging it weightless. You're gonna dig in the grass much less often it's going to kind of just hover over it. And instead of using my reel to retrieve that, I'm just moving it with the rod and I'm strictly retrieving slack line with the reel. Just dragging it until I feel the tight line. Reel down, wait for that fish to start moving with it. Because a lot of the time they're real subtle pickups. They might blow on it a couple of times. But if you feel them start moving with it, they got it. Reel down, jam it home at that point. But it's working real good now. Finally got them dialed in. Little one on the hill. Wax and chop stop, chopstick worm. Oh, that one got it good. Woo, right in the back roof of the mouth. So now, when you think of spring, I want you to think of, you know, spring temperature, anywhere from water starting off at 55 degrees. You know, March, April, May, I know synonymous with spring, but depending on where you're at across the country, uh, water temperature can vary a lot. Once this water temperature gets roughly around 58 degrees for about two weeks, that's what it takes for the female's eggs to start incubating and maturing. Uh, that's how they're going to get fat and porker, and uh, they're going to eat up before then. You know, right around 55 to that 60 degrees, I would say the majority of the bass are in the pre-spawn, you know, coming up there. And that's morning temperature. You want your morning temperature to consistently be that. These bass are going to move up to creek arms, creek mouths, um, as the spawn progresses, they're going to move more in there. If you don't have creeks, they're going to move up onto the flats. They're going to move into shallow bays. Spart you know, parts with hard bottom that they can build these beds on. Um, that being said, you know, if you're getting these fish move into the creeks, all of a sudden in the spring you have a big rainy day and those fish disappear on you. That's when you want to look for those creek channels going back through there. Uh, you want to look for that run in that water, that nearest deep spot next to that flat. They're going to pull back out to it. Um, if you don't have a nearest deep spot, more than likely they're going to pull into heavy cover, like on a river system. They're only going to bury into that heavy cover and then move right back up as conditions present themselves. They're not going to move miles back out. You know, so keep that in mind. Uh, river systems, dead end sloughs, uh, little bays, marinas, hard shallow flat bottoms, uh, main lakes with creeks. They're going to be in those creek arms um, getting ready to spawn. You know, real early they're going to be out at the mouth. Um, as it gets closer to the spawn, they're going to be moving in. You know, during the spawn, they're going to be back in there. In the post-spawn, they're going to start working their way back out or be under heavy cover, boat docks, things of that sort. But I would say, really, you really want to start looking shallow once that water starts getting in that you know, 55 in the morning, 58 in the morning. That's really when you want to start looking, I would say, 10 to 12 feet and less. You know, even eight five feet and less that's really where you want to start using those search baits if you're not getting bit they could still be in that transitional mode so still tell yourself they might be on that winter bite you know if they're grabbing it up shallow and swimming out deep immediately um, you might have suspended fish you might want to try a swim bait you might want to try a heavier wacky rig something suspended uh, just that's going to give them time to eat it and swim back out because they could still be in that winter mode uh, but it definitely doesn't hurt to tie on a square bill or something, a chatter bait, a swim bait, fan around and look for those active fish. Good one. Yeah. 
pounder. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Oh, right through the corner of the jaw. Yeah. Not bad. Two and a half. Not bad. Real heavy. Real thick. He's got that uh, black spot on the back of his gill right there. The black ear. Love that. Now, I want to explain something to you guys about what we're doing now. So we're going to the back of each little bay, and you can do this even on a, you know, a non-little private man-made lake. Um, anywhere you go, if there's a flat and it's a bay, and you go up and you see beds. You're looking in the shallow, you see beds, but no fish or no big fish. Those females are not far behind those big males. They're, they could be 25 feet just out from them. So what we're doing is we're fanning out just beyond the beds. We're kind of coming right up to the beds. We're fanning out and we're dragging along and we're running into those females. We just lost one about four and a half pounds right at the boat, uh, but we are getting bit this way. We're finding beds, basically coming up right where the beds are and casting out looking for those deeper fish that are not far behind, those deeper, bigger, better fish. So one thing you want to keep in mind too, when it's real early, you know, the colder it is, the fish are more associated to the bottom. So staying down there right against the bottom is usually a better deal, whether that's slow rolling a uh, spinner bait or slow rolling a chatter bait or dragging a jig or tra dragging a big worm down there. You know, in the winter time, those fish love to eat crawdads. Right around, you know, 50 to 52 degrees, those bigger mature crawdads roam around a lot. And the real big dark black and red ones, they don't really uh, duck down in the mud nearly as often as those smaller, immature, you know, brownish, um, green crawdads. Those are like your smaller juveniles, which tend to come out, uh, you know, a little bit later. You're going to find a lot more juveniles out as the water's into the upper 50s. And you're also going to find the bluegill activity starts to happen a little bit more often up in the shallows also in the mid to upper 50. So when you first start off and it's early and cold, you know, fishing crawdad imitations can work substantially well. Um, this is what I'm doing. I'm just bumping a uh, vibrating jig right along the bottom, a black and red with some orange in it, vibrating jig right now. Um, they haven't been hitting the reaction baits, but we're later in the evening now. And another thing, in the spring, more fish progressively move up into the shallows later in the day versus early in the morning. So you might want to target just outside that area. You were catching them a few evenings before if you get out there early, and, you know, and think maybe I'll come back later in the day and refish this uh, a little bit shallower at that point. But uh, another thing with those crawdads, a lot of people get confused about in the spring. If you have a shallow reservoir with a lot of grass in it, that's a lot of vitamin A for them and a loose muddy bottom. Here in my lake, I have a relatively hard bottom. It's all man-made, but it gets a ton of grass. So there's a ton of vitamin A for these crawdads. So they're always black and red, black and orange. And you know, like in the California Delta, as all the spring run-in enters there, it really darkens it out. Okay, and a lot of those crawdads will almost turn pure black or black and blue. So what happens when you get black and blue, that's a vitamin A deficiency in those crawfish. So fishing a pure black jig or a pure black and blue can be really good at that time. But if you have a lot of grass and it's shallow and it's not completely muddied out, more than likely your bigger mature crawdads are gonna lean more into that black and red. You know those th three to four, five inch plus crawfish tend to be a lot more black and red. Uh, the smaller ones, if you're fishing a finesse jig, you might want to try uh, green pumpkin or brown to increase your bite ratio, but I would try that more in that 58 to, I mean 55 to 60 degree water temperature at that point. Um, a lot of these smaller bucks, when they start roaming, you're going to get a whole lot more bites on your brown and your uh, watermelons, your, uh, your greens, so keep that in mind, guys. Oh yeah, that's fish so far. There we go, that's a better one. We moved back into this cove. You know, we we're throwing reaction baits and we we're getting small fish. The smaller ones were reacting on it. But, uh, 
Come on, big girl. Yeah, there we go. There's a nice five pounder. That's more like it right there. That is more like it. I mean, absolutely choke that wacky rig. And, you know, I want to explain something to you guys that, you know, I, I was throwing a big glide bait. I had about a two, about six, seven pounders follow it. And before I, instead of uh, digging in with the pliers right now, I'll just let her get a drink. You know, I had two, six or seven pounders follow the big glide bait. They just weren't eating it. My ones on my A rig were all smaller. The ones cranking uh, were smaller. So we're back here dead sticking these worms. You know, I could be fishing a bigger worm or throwing the jig and dragging the jig to try to find a more consistent big fish bite. Uh, but you know, a chopstick style bait, a Senko, an Ocho, a, a whatever you have it, you know, a bait like that, throwing it out there and letting it sit. When these fish are staging right outside of spawning flats and pulling up, these females are waiting just outside, can be absolutely deadly. We're not twitching it, we're not shaking it, we're just pitching it out there, letting it sit there and waiting for that line to swim off and setting the hook on some really big fish. Well guys, I'm waiting on my new trolling motor. My old one, Baron, is simply busted out in here and the thing's too old, so it's time to throw that one away. But uh, that's it for the day. We're running out of light. We had to paddle around, so I couldn't search out my uh, big bites on big baits too often. I had to kind of commit to an area, considering we're paddling there. But that's it for spring bass fishing tips one. Um, hopefully I can do a couple more for these, more of these videos for you guys, and uh, maybe I'll slip in some notes along the bottom. But I appreciate you guys watching. InformativeFisherman.com. Hit me up at Facebook, also at Informative Fisherman. I'm doing Periscope, and I also have an Instagram now. Appreciate it, guys. Well, Mama told me when I was young Said, sit beside me My only son And listen closely